Yes, 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 yes. A very, very good evening to you all, um, fans of the Comrade Show and all our viewers around the world. It's my privilege and honor to welcome you all to today's program, our Sunday, Sunday tonic. You are all welcome to today's program. Please share this broadcast. Share this broadcast because today is going to be a very interesting one an engaging one at that matter. So you are all welcome to today's program. Um, I'll be anchoring today's show, and my name is uh, Dr. Tony Osakbama Agbwansebaife. You are all welcome. Wherever you are watching us in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining us today. I also want to introduce my brother who will be with me here today. Uh, unfortunately, one of our musketeers, the comrade pharmacist, Austin Iremira, is not going to be with us today because of some, uh, you know, family engagement that he just could not uh, extricate himself from. So he's, going, he's not going to be here. So, But let me just quickly introduce my brother, uh, the comrade himself, comrade Lamte Ponsa Oriakito, greet uh, you all, our people. Comrade Lante. Yes, thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Comrade Dr. Tony Agbansevaife. And of course, Nigerians across the world, greetings to you all. It's still a Comrade show, and it is a segment we call Comrade of Friends. Thanks for joining us. And don't forget, today is the 29th day of May. And today makes it 23 years of Nigeria's democracy. How far have we come? Share this broadcast. And at some point, I'm sure uh, Tony is going to lay the framework to make this program even more participatory. Yes, over to you, Tony Agbons. Thank you so very much, sir. Thank you so much, my brother, Comrade Lamte Oriahe. Uh, Nigerians across the world, those of you that are watching us today, is the last Sunday of the month of May 2022. And today, as far as Nigeria is concerned, it's a, it's a huge day. Um, it used to be our democracy day before the current administration moved it to, to June 12. But the importance of today is still not lost on us. On this day in 1999, Nigeria, after many years of military rule, over 30 years of military rule, Nigeria returned to democracy, the one we popularly call civilian rule. And former president Olusegun Obasanjo became our president on 29th of May, 1999. Olusegun Obasanjo, on completion of his first term in 2003, contested for a second term, and he was re-elected. And he finished his tenure on May 29, 2007, and the late President Musa Yaradua became Nigeria's president. Yaradua, unfortunately, could not complete his tenure due to ill health. God bless his soul. He passed away just within two years of his tenure. And his deputy, President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, after all the drama that took place, you will remember, became a Nigerian president, you know, succeeding his boss. Jonathan, after about a year plus of finishing the Yaradwa tenure, contested and he became Nigeria's president, you know, winning the election in 2011. In 2015, we had that momentous occasion for the first time in Nigeria's history, an opposition party, the All Progressive Congress, you know, defeated the ruling People's Democratic Party and the current government 
of President Muhammad Buhari came to be in 2015. Buhari went for a second tenure and was re-elected in 2019. And he's been president of Nigeria and the APC have been the ruling party in Nigeria for the, in the last seven years. Nigerians, we all know that this current government has 365 days. Nigeria is going to have a new president come May 29, 2023. So you can see that we've, we've come a long way in this last 23 years. So hence today's program in remembrance of what took place in 1999. We have christened it 23 years of Nigerian democracy, the road so far. We are going to put our numbers out. Fans and followers of this program, as you watch, can call in at some point so that we can make it very engaging. So, Comrade Lante, it's Pomosa Oriaki. 23 years, na na na. How you feel, my brother? Yes, uh, once again, I want to thank you, my brother, uh, Comrade Dr. Uh, Tony Albons. Um, <laughs> honestly, time flies, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you were um, trying to take us through, you know, uh, how it's, it's been, uh, looking at the leadership we've had, you know, it's 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 just so, you know, seemed to me like it's yesterday and all of that. You know, however, um, I, I think I would, uh, I would uh, definitely draw some positives. And uh, one of the positives I'm going to draw out is that we are still here. The democracy is still thriving. Uh, it's not been interrupted, and uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be interrupted. So I think that's a positive. Uh, however, uh, for many of us, particularly those of us who are called the masses, the, the downtrodden, um, democracy has not really you know, uh, met our expectations, particularly looking at the way our polity has developed, you know, and so um, there, there definitely would be disappointment. I, I am very disappointed that we are still here, and the major area that is um, prompting my, you know, disappointment is the area of grave, you know, uh, injustice in the land, uh, the non-attention given to the moral rule of equity, if you may, of you know, of balance, of you know, particularly looking at how you know uh, the leadership has been uh, evolving. Uh, some people just make it look like you know, leadership, presidency in this country is their better right, and there are some others who just readily connive with them. They just you know they they, they look comfortable. In, in their own positions, and uh, so it, it, they don't see any problem. I Meanwhile, well, there are some other parts of the country where people don't even feel included at all, and so all of that has led, you know, to so many different things, agitations, you know, uh, that needed not to be. Looking at how blessed we are as a people, you know, with uh, human, you know, and natural resources, this is the most, you know, potentially, you know, most blessed nation in the world, uh, but we we have evolved to carve out a nation, you know, which leadership, you know, is uh, only for what they can get, self-service and all of that. And nobody, uh, we've not really seen those beautiful brides that would serve the nation, you know, for the glory of service. And so to that extent, those are some of the things that are not positive about this nation, uh, that because we have, for 23 years, we have not evolved a political culture that does not instill hope for the future, a political culture that is highly debased, that, ha that is highly monetized, you know, that uh, uh, takes the shiny way of, you know, honesty, prudence, and uh, the glory of service. And so, uh, we will hope that uh, looking at how far you know we have come and how things are, we are able to evolve. Looking at the errors we've made and the results of those errors, we're able to evolve a new Nigeria 
wherein you know the errors we've made can actually you know uh, be you know uh, treated and make us evolve better as a nation. So far, it's a mixed bag. 24, 23 years. Mm. So far, it's a mixed bag in the last 23 years. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade uh, Lante uh, Oriaki, for what you have said. I, I listen very, very, very carefully to you, and I'm sure our viewers are they are really listening and you know get making sense of this whole uh, situation we are in. Please, our numbers are, are, are displayed on the screen. You can call in. Um, please, when you want to call in, call in uh, directly uh, so that. Uh, you can contribute to this program. 23 years, you said it's been uninterrupted. And this is the first time in the history of Nigeria. You recall when Nigeria got independence from uh, Great Britain in 1960, mm -hmm. we only enjoyed democracy for six years when the military struck in uh, in, in July and uh, was it? January. January 15th. Uh, 15, 1966, uh, yes. Major Zogu and all that, they struck. And then in July, there was a counter coup that brought... July, uh, July 29th. Yeah. July 29th, General Yakubu Gowan, uh, yeah. the Yak, uh, that, that brought him uh, to, to power. And then we had that military rule. Um, Gowan was succeeded by... Of course, Ironsi was the one that was in there for six months. And Gowan was there for nine years. Uh, he did promise to return the country to democracy, but he didn't do it. And there were several shifting of the goalposts. You know, then, you know, you know, the, you know. A year after, you know, we had this issue between Gowan and Ojuku that led to the Biafra War. Uh, thank you. I, I that. Yeah. Sixty-seven to nineteen seventy. Yeah. All the issues and the breaking of our regions, um, you know, and all that. And then. In 1976, we had General uh, Mutala Ramat Mohammed, uh, who came in to, uh, and he came in, you know, to clean the the stable and all that. Yeah. But his government was cut short uh, by another uh, coup led yeah. by Lieutenant Colonel Major Dinka. Uh, Dinka. 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 Yeah, uh, and the president was uh, assassinated, and his deputy General Lucia Gombasanjo became Nigeria's president in 1976. Uh, Obasanjo handed over to Alaji uh, Sheu Shagari um, in 1979. And again, and this is where I'm actually driving out, yes. that government only lasted for four years. Uh, after another election, a second election, Shagari was just in for about three months. And um, Major General Buhari and his, uh, and his team, they, they, they had another coup and kicked him out. So from 1984, from, from, from 1984, fact, December 31st, 1983, yes. down to Buhari was there for about 20 months and uh, General Ibrahim kicked him out in 1985. I think uh, August 27th, 1985, yes. uh, Babangida came in. Then he said he would return the country to democracy, but there was a lot of Maradonic, Changing of the goalposts from that 1985 down to there was even a time we had a dark in Nigeria. Yes. President Babangida was there at the federal level. We had the National Assembly. We had the uh, civilian uh, governors yes. for the dark where you yes. have military and civilian ruling really together. So and then we had that election in 1993, 1993. where we had uh, where, where demo democracy was murdered. Yeah, democracy was murdered and butchered. Uh, butchered or whatever I want to call it. Yes. Late Chief M.K. Abiola, uh, the, the, the acclaimed winner, like they say in the books now, he actually won that election, but the full results was never given. Yes. And 1993, there was a nationwide crisis, and uh, the Maradona himself had to step aside when the, the, the game became too hot. And we had an interim government with... Uh, Led by Shoneko. Uh, Late Chief N.S. Shoneko just NS passed away recently. He was there from uh, August of, uh, you know, that 1993 down to when Abacha, you know, kicked, kicked him out and Abacha became Nigeria's uh, military head, head, of, of state. head of state. Abacha too also started his own, uh, we hand over, we hand over, but he never did it. Eke Abiola passed away, Abacha himself and all that. And Abdul Salami Abubakar promised to return the country to democracy in 1998 when he came in. 
but many people didn't believe it. They said, oh, this military, they've been saying it, they never did it. Yeah. But eventually, Abdul Salami was head of state for 11 months, and he actually handed over uh, to General Lushegu and Basenjo uh, by default, because the whole nation felt like uh, the, the southwest of Nigeria have been hard done by, like we say in the UK here. Yes. And everybody was like, Let, let's, let's have somebody from the southwest. And for the first time in Nigeria, we had two, for the, the two big political parties, we had two aspirants from the same part of the country. Chief Olu, Olu Falaye, you know, he contested with uh, Olu Shago and Basenjo. And either way, a southwesterner was going to be president and, and Olu Shago and Basenjo came in. Now, this is where I'm going, uh, comrade. Today, you just mentioned it justice. What have the southeastern people of Nigeria done that, like yesterday now, the PDP concluded their primaries. Yeah. Well, there was no chance for somebody from the southeast to yeah. even to smear that ticket. No chance. Yeah. yeah. No chance. So, yeah. what is your own take on this? Um, you know, pushing aside. It's, some people are saying it's because of IPOB, uh, Masob, and the agitation in the southeast. What is your take? Oh no, no, no not at all. Uh, there, there is. There is uh... Nigeria, Nigeria's historical development, you know, uh, led to all of these. You know, um, you recall, you, you, did, you did talk about the first military coup we had, hmm. the January 15, 1966 military coup. It was led by Major Ezegu, Ezegu uh, an Igbo man who was, uh, who was a very young, young, talented young man, intelligent guy. I think he was the, the, the commandant of. Uh, of uh, uh, I can't remember, but one of the brigades in the in the heart of the northern Nigeria. Yeah, in, in, in Kaduna. In Kaduna Azale, you know, and all of that. So, and the pattern of that coup, you know, according to what we read about, it, it the coup was the military saw massive corruption along the Nigerian political space, hmm. and so the idea of the coup was to ensure that they cleanse the Nigerian state of these bad politicians. So that Nigeria can, you know, bring some fresh, you know, some air of fresh air, and eventually, what happened was like it, it now became a coup that was targeted against the Northerners. It now became it now looked like an Igbo organized coup because a, the coup actually now you know, killed, you know, in the coup they only now killed most of the what's it called uh, the Hausa, you know, the Northerners in government. Meanwhile. Some of the Igbos in government, people like uh, the Governor General at the time, uh, what's his name, uh, Zeke, mm -hmm. you know, they were spared. As a matter of fact, before the coup, it was, you know, understood that he went out of town. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's recorded that uh, when he was alive, he was always going out of town when there's a military coup in Nigeria and all of that. And meanwhile, people like, um, you know, Tafa Balewa, you know, the Prime Minister were killed and so many others. And so the house has felt like this was a target. And as a matter of fact, that actually, you know, gave rise to the reason why the house has began to plan to kill Major Ironsi in July of the same year, yeah. you know. And people like uh, Major Sadauna, you know, they were major, you know, parts of uh, the core soldiers that led, you know, all of that, you know. And all. So... From there, the tension between the Easterners, the Igbos, and the Hausas began to grow. And from there, the, the leadership of the Hausas at the time, you know, they, they've already started sowing that seed. You can remember in our political development during the period of the of the nationalist and all of that, there was already there was a strong affinity between the Hausas, the Fulani, Hausa Fulanis, and the British. You know, while you know, the Hausas wanted to delay the process of independence because they appeared to, they were still learning from the British. The South, you know, wanted our democracy as quickly as possible. And so all the nationalist movement, you know, uh, probably would have had our, our, our independence earlier, but some of those things were, you know, efforts were truncated by, by the Northerners. And so there had always been this, you know, uh, not compatibility between the Igbos and the houses, you understand what I'm saying? And so when this coup now take place, 
you know, and now it eventually led to the civil war and all of that. So a big gap of distrust was created. And the political leaders of the North began to sow the seed that Igbos cannot be allowed to lead. There's a footage that has gone around, and it's a, it's a footage by, uh, by one of the North political leaders, I will soon remember his name, who told an international journalist that Igbos cannot be allowed to be in charge, because when, when they are in charge, they take over everywhere. And that, you know, uh, thought, that school of thought, has not did not only end there, it has gone into their own, I mean, the Muslim religious leaders, many of them, uh, looking at the way the Northern, you know, the, 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 the houses and the Fulanese, you know, the structure of, of their existence and the way they live, they, it is very easy to sow this seed from the top to the bottom. You understand what I'm saying? Through the religio re religious streams and all of that. And so it is that you know, ideology that they are they, they are holding on to. They have kept on with. You understand what I'm saying? And that is why you can see some of them, they come out, you know, uh, even in these days, you know, they just come out to tell us, tell the world that, uh, you know, they, they, it is their destiny to rule Nigeria forever. And so there is no concern about the Igbos, you know, uh, nobody wants the Igbo, I, I mean, from there. And I, but where I have my graphs, that the Igbos have not been in government, to be honest, is not because of this ideology of the houses mm -hmm. alone. I think it is because of the connivance of our Yoruba elites with the houses. Because our Yoruba elites find comfort with this ideology. Because this ideology pays them. It gives them room to become vice. Mm -hmm. It gives them room some time to, to alternate, to share the leadership between the, the, the houses and themselves. I'm not talking about all Yorubas, because all Yorubas don't think this way. And so, therefore, they don't even challenge the ideology at all. As far as they are concerned, once the officers are making, you know, this case, they just queue behind them and provide the alternative to support the officers. And at the end of the day, if the nation wants to maintain justice, everybody must speak to justice. You know, and so that is what has kept this nation where it is. And this singular act of not allowing the Igbos to at least be part of this process, okay, is right now putting Nigeria, you know, uh, on a very peri per per perilous, uh, you know, uh, 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 position. Thank you very that's much. That's my take, my yeah, thank you very much, uh, comrade. It is very clear from your analysis that uh, there is injustice because I know that uh, after the civil war, uh, when uh, uh, General F. Young, you know, you know, surrendered and. There's that speech by Yakubu Gowan in 1970. He said, no victor, no vanquish. No vanquish. And, and we all remember that. Uh, but the Igbos have consistently complained that they have been marginalized from the scheme of things in Nigeria. And the events of the leading to this 2023 general election is actually showing that the other part of Nigeria, they are not fair to the Igbos. I want to make it clear here. Neither of, of us here sitting here is an Igbo by any chance. We are not. But we are speaking on the ground of, you know, equity, fairness, and justice. justice. The, if, if, if we had done it in 1999, like we've consistently said in this program, we have done it in 1999, at least common sense, you know, should have also told us again to do it. Because when you look at the, 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 the southeast of Nigeria, and when we talk of the southeast, I just want to make this very, very clear here. I'm talking of the five states. Not we, we are, we, And I'm talking of uh, uh, Abia, Enugu, uh, Eboi, uh, Imo, Imo, and Enugu. Uh, uh, Anambra. In, uh, and, uh, yes, and Anambra. Those are the five states that make, make up the southeast. They deserve a shot because, and I have, I believe that if common sense prevails and we, we have a Southeast president in Nigeria 2023, all this ag ag agitation, they, they, will, they, will, they will fizzle out. Natural, natural. It, it, it's a natural thing. Yeah. Because, natural. but like you have said, comrade, um, the three major ethnic groups, you know, it's three, I wish yeah. it's four. Once two of them 
uh, come together. It's always hard for the other one uh, to stand Absolutely. very well. So the, the 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 most time you've, you always we've always had this interchange between the 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 the, the, the houses like we always say Hausa Fulani and the Yorubas in the southwest, and yeah. that alliance have always given either side of them you know uh, majority. But yeah. being that as it may, comrade, we come to twenty twenty two. We've been having this democracy. Everything is going. It's been uninterrupted. We thank God for that. But when you look at the indices, because uh, today I I just try not to read too many headlines yeah. of Nigerian newspapers. But I saw a few, and you can see people are writing twenty three years of uh, poverty and pain, hardship. So and if you look at Nigerians. Um, and then you, you measure life, value for life, life expectancy, um, all the key indices, uh, health care, uh, education, uh, even governance itself, all the things you need. Are we progressing or retrogressing when you look at quality of life generally? Okay, just to answer that very straight, I'm, I'm going to try to answer, answer with some illustrations here. Mm. I still remember very clearly in 1981, uh, I had an uncle who was schooling here in London. Mm. And I do remember still, you know, him writing to request for money with my. You know, my father, you know, um, and grandparents running around, okay, sometimes going to sell uh, Aba, I mean, uh, law, yeah. Yeah. cocoa and all of that, to raise some money to send to this uncle, you know what I'm saying now, to pay his fees in the UK. That's like in 19... 82, 83, you know, even through 84. Now, fast forward to this time. Okay? I, today, live in the UK, the same UK that my uncle was, you know, in 82, where he was schooling, and money was being sent to him. I now send money to loads of people in Nigeria to leave, to go to school to feed some to even provide shelter for them i don't know whether you understand the picture from saying now I get that you. tells you mm. to what extent we have gone backwards as a, as a, as a nation now zero back a bit uh 15 20 years ago the not just the 15 20 years ago uh, imagine before this administration came on board you know the dollar was exchanging for how much for about less than two hundred, uh, uh, less than less than two hundred naira. Mm. Okay. Uh, today, how much is the do dollar is changing for? Okay, the dollar is not changing for so much. The about yeah. six hundred or so, yeah. five five ninety something, as it mm. were. The it pound selling right now is almost seven fifty. It's almost seven fifty. Right. It's even yeah. more than it's more than seven fifty now. So today, the pound selling is for seven sixty one. Hmm. Okay, and the black market rate and all of that. So. All of this tells you that we are not doing well at all. Mm. And as we speak, the cost of living in the country, we have more poverty rate now in Nigeria than any time in the history of the country. In, in, in 20 years ago, Nigeria was not named the, the poverty capital, capital of the world. Today, Nigeria is the poverty capital of the world. Mm. So at the end of the day, you know, and, I mean, it is in this era, we have seen more money as a nation. The level of corruption is like no man's business. And little wonder, you know, uh, why people in Port Harcourt, because of election, mm -hmm. people will die massively. I mentioned like, like more than 19. Somebody corrected to say it's even up to about 30, 31 for no just cause because there's going to be an election and all of that. So the desperation for people to hold public you know, offices is, is, is so high now. Mm. And people do everything to ensure that they can kill to get there because when they get there, they believe that all the issues of their lives is solved. 
So politics has become the only industry right now that people can actually just enter and, you know, unquestionably begin to get rich. You understand? And without anybody asking any questions and all of that. And all of that is feeding on the patrimony of the, of the Nigerian people. And this is the same reason. The few people in the North, the also Flanese, the political leaders in the North, the elites, the same reason why they do not want the Igbos to be part of this process. One of the reasons, because for them and the, and, and the others that are connected with them, and the, 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 leader, the political leaders of the South-South who appear not to know their left from their right, okay, once somebody was mocking them the other day and said, the North will just throw a chunk at them, they just cluster around the chunk and be sharing why, mm -hmm. you know, the North is going away with the destiny of everybody. And so, at the end of the day, it's a mess. It's a huge mess. It's, a, it's been a huge mess. Thank you very much. Right yeah, thank you, my brother. We are not doing well at all. 23 years down the drain, 23 years gone, we're not doing well. We are just astraying this. Now, people have always said, oh, Nigerians, we, we, we have a way of always complaining. We complain, complain. So now we move. What is the way forward? And I'm going to ask you a question. But before I ask you this question, I want to just develop something. The political parties are vehicles for ascension to power in any democratic uh, institution. And from more than 200 years ago, or thereabout, Abraham Lincoln, he said something. And he gave us the popular uh, definition of democracy, which we have today, that democracy is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And is, that is the definition. And when you go to a lot of the countries around the world, democracy is a social contract where people are handed sovereignty over a nation and they superintend over the nation for the people. Absolutely. For the people. Absolutely. But, but what we find in Nigeria is... We now have a caller. Yes. Hello. 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 Yes. That is commercial. Yes, commercial. Yes. What's your name and where are you calling Hello. from? Hi, my name is Ben. I'm calling from London, Cambridge. God bless you, sir. Go ahead, sir. Ben from London. Uh, I, I, I just want to correct one um, impression that you just made. I just heard you talked about um, the not not wanting the Easterners to um, to partake from the common patrimony of Nigeria. Um. I don't think it's a problem of the North that the Easterners are not um, are not playing national politics. Um, because if we have to go back to 1999, when this Fourth Republic came into play, yes, you know, the office of the Senate President was uh, given to the Easterners. Yes. Um, I'm glad that um, we talked about history today. I heard you guys, you know, um, really now to how Nigeria started. Can you remember how many Senate presidents the Eastern has produced under four years? It was like they were changing it as if they were going to the bathroom. That was not a problem of the Northerners. That was the Easterners doing that to themselves. You know? It was that, I, I can't, we had more than five Senate presidents under the Easterners, you know? But now, look at it, look at the Senate president now that we've had. The Buhari tenure is going to come to an end. He stayed only one Senate president. The last time we had Bukala Saraki, only one Senate president, you know? So, the Easterners are the problem of the Easterners. Now look at the PDP primaries. We look at the PDP and the APC primaries. Look at the PDP primaries. How many Easterners are gone in for, um, for, for, for the presidential seat? We all know, I know you support um, P2B. We all know that P2B was the best option that the Easterners had. Why didn't they come down and say, okay, listen, everybody is talking about P2B. Why don't we come together and support one person? At least let us say the person we didn't win. But in these primaries, we had about four of them. 
having scanty votes and him having 19 votes, the other one having six votes, the other one, they can't come together. Look at what Tim, um, Tambowa did, you know, stepping down for Atiku to win. So when the Northerners decide to come together for their own good, we should not blame them that the Easterners cannot put their act together and say, you know what, let us come together for our own good. Now go to APC. We have about how many of them coming at Rocha Sokorocha, um, what was it called? The former minister of um, science and technology, Obuna uh, We have uh, the former minister of state for education coming out. We have uh, the former uh, senior president coming out. All of them want to be president at once. Can't they come together and say, you know what? In the north, we only have two people. Don't forget, the senior president, Lawan, and... Um, Gifted governor. Those are the only two people from the north. So if the north decide to come together and win it again now, we will still blame the north for not wanting the eastern to succeed. You know? So at the end of the day, look at the meeting that the southern um, the southern has had. They called all their presidential candidates. I bet you saw that meeting there, two, two. Everybody contested for president in the southwest. They were in one meeting. You know? One is thinking that these guys are already strategizing for a consensus candidate and things like that. But the Easterners, everybody wants to share from the case. Nobody wants to come down for each other. They want, and you know what that is. If everybody wants to partake, then nobody will partake at the end of the day. And that is the problem of the Easterners. So by the time we start using our tongue to count our teeth, by coming together and saying, you know what, one person is more popular than all of us. Why don't you support that person? You know, because if you support one person, you, you, it's such a boom. You know how the boom is. You know, if the boom comes together, it will be able to sweep. But if the boom decides to go single way each, then they won't be able to, because they're already disadvantaged. At the end of the day, they have to come together, you know, knowing that, okay, we're already disadvantaged. If they are progressing one person, if they say, okay, it is P2B, since everybody's trying P2B, let us as a Easterners present P2B, they will have a case. Yes. Well, yes. at the moment, we have more than five people. Look at people who are, people who have been in the Senate, um, Abaribe, who have been in government since 1999. Look at the Kuremad, who have been in government since 1999. Because they lose their farmers, they are all saying, oh, we are the campaign. Because they think that government belongs to them. They can't come together, and that is the problem of the Eastern Arab. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much. A point, uh, point well made. Thank you so much. Uh, our, mm. our brother Ben, uh, yes. calling from London in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Very valid point. You've made your point uh, very clearly. We thank but you. I, can, can I quickly just uh, yeah, correct but, but, you? But the, 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 I want to just uh, chip in something uh, to mm. Ben because I, I I really enjoy your robust uh, your robust speech and analysis. Very true. But Ben, the only thing I want to tell you is this. Uh, they said when, when we get to a bridge, we'll cross it. I want to refer you to what happened, and I think we said it in this program when we started in 1999. Don't you think it would have been different? The, the fact you said about the Senate presidency in uh, 99, uh, there were actually four. Uh, Okadigbo, Evan Seweren, uh, Ken Unamani, and uh, I think uh, Pius uh, Ayim. Uh, Ayim. Ayim. So there were four Senate presidents. Yeah, that's true. But what do you think if the are uh, two major political parties? Because we're, we're coming to analyze political parties just now before you called in. If the two political parties have zoned this presidency to the east, my brother, it would have been a different game. And that is what some of us were advocating for, clamoring for, that let common sense prevail. Because yes. by throwing this race open to all the zones, if, for me, when I look at the southwest, I'm like, it was only yesterday your pastor just did eight years. So why would somebody from the southwest be thinking of being a Nigerian president again? Yeah. Why would somebody from the north be thinking of being a dinner president again when the uh, is coming? Oh, yeah. Another call has come from Guinea Bissau. Okay. Hello. Get his name. <laughs> guys, don't call. Uh, okay. guys. So, so, <laughs> so that's the thing. It, it's because this thing has been thrown open. Yeah, the, the Easterners, they have their problem. We understand that. But I feel if if this both uh, two big political parties have said, okay, we would we, we'll just allow the like what we did in 99 allow only south easterners to it probably they would have uh you know done what you said and thrown their weight behind I, one or two candidates come on I, I i i want to equally you know look, look the fact they what the, the, you know the point made by ben is very yes. valid yes uh, I, I think that the Igbos too need to you know pull their acts together yeah yesterday 
in when PDP were having their what's it called their primaries. I told you, I tell you, Atiku ought to have lost the primary. Yes. If Tambuwa had continued. Yeah, true. And Tambuwa came to that field, the northern elite, they had met, and they knew that they wanted to feed one candidate. Mm. General Gusso went to that ground. Probably had no business being there. Big General hope. Gusso is one of those unseen political power brokers in the north. Yeah. Now, just to know this now. And call the parties and say this is what we want. And they reached an agreement, which was not too difficult. And Tabuwa stepped down and pronounced that his delegates should support Atiku Abubakar. Now, nobody expected saw that coming. This was Tabuwa that Governor Wiki even took a bullet for years back. Mm, 2019. I don't know. 2019. Mm. You understand? Know this was this was Tambuwa that you expect that would you know be the man of Wiki in this process. Mm. But the man looked at it because of this arrangement on the ground. Now that's one. The second aspect is this: on the issue of the Senate presidency, you know, in the time of uh, Obasanjo, let's not let's not mix mix the the idea. It had nothing to do with the unity of the Igbos. It was a gay plan of Obasanjo, the president. Yeah. Obasanjo wanted all the time a puppet Senate president. Mm. And so Obasanjo, Obasanjo was the person creating all the problems within the Senate that was leading to the change of Senate presidency. And at that time, there was a gentle marker of moral agreement that the Igbos are going to be, an Igbo person will be the Senate president at that time. And so when one is removed, another Igbo president will have to replace him. It had nothing to do with whether the Igbos were united or not. It was Obasanjo who was playing this game. That also happened at that time. Um, let's, I think it's, it's still Mr. Ben. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah, come in. Come in. Good evening, sir. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, I am Christian. I, I call from the UK, from Wales, to be precise, right? Go ahead, Mr. Christian. Christian from Wales. Go ahead, sir. I just, I just, yeah, I just wanted to make a, a correction. Um, I just heard what Ben just spoke when he just called, but I just want to make some quick corrections uh, for Ben. The truth of the matter is that the structure, we keep saying it, the, the, the political space or the structure in Nigeria has been done to the same people. Was it the same, was it the evil people that made, uh, made the southeastern region only five states? You see, but people that make all other, other regions this day that fight for uh, the Eastern region fight day. I'm actually coming to those points. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to make a point because he said we were never united. How many of them are there from the South West struggling for the for the uh, this United States? that is tough. You have Fayemi, you have Tinubu, we have Bushi I'm, I'm equally coming to that. No, no, I'm just trying to make a point because I know I know the tone. I know where he came from. Then I thought that it's, it's about the truth is mine. I need to tell him. Yes. We also have our people also had meetings. We didn't know who we are in fire to the all of them. They all had their own meetings. But we know what transpired in everything. So the truth of the matter is that the space gets, gets, I don't know, I thank God you are hosting this kind of space and giving a whole lot of people a kind of exposure. I like your own truthfulness, your honesty and everything. But you should understand that Tina Chego once said in his, his writing that the only consensus Nigerians always have or that's right, you don't have a constant people, everybody will come together. That's just what I, I just want to make that point. So many things that we just watch many things closely, you discover that it's not as if maybe people are fighting themselves. I, I can I can tell you authenticity. No other tribe in Nigeria has helped themselves more than our own people. It's not about dragging. So I don't know where he's bringing the mentality that we don't we are okay, the Senate president that they we are changing, they we are changing up. Who was sending the Senate president? Who was the president? The Obasanjo was masterminding everything. Absolutely. From what I got to do, I was about an empire. All of this is just political strategy. Yes. There's no way. It's, it's no matter. It's, it's no matter in Nigeria. Everybody knows that. Okay, if they do, <coughs> they won't want Nigeria. Why? Why are they struggling for for president from Southwest? They have people who they have a Dole Bobo struggling in PDP. They also have a who's who a fire who's struggling in PDP again. They have so many people. If they so much love Nigeria, why would they not say, okay, let's step down for you both? And these are the stuff. 
So the fact that he's trying to protect his own territory while trying to tell the Igbos they will like struggling, that's not the fact. Thank, Th you. thank you very much, sir. That was exactly the point I was make, I was trying to make. Thank you, yes. uh, Christian. That if this particular dispensation now, this 23, will say, okay, we throw it to the southeastern zone. This exactly. will be, it will be a different thinking. But when oh, oh, oh. Yeah, both parties just left everything open. Open, yes. They, they you, you, know, you know, and again, if you leave it open, the Northerners, you know, they have done it in such a way that even if there's a certain candidate right now and a not versus a northern candidate, they've done it in a way that now, I don't know how whether they, it was verified. They have in a way that voted. there is no way, even if the Northern desire to vote for a Northern candidate and the Southern desire to vote for a Southern candidate, there is no way you will win. Because mm -hmm. they've done it in a way that they've organized the census, provided figures to show that the Northern are even more in number than the Southern yes. We are talking of a game of numbers here. It's true. You understand? They have created local government. There are some local governments in, in the North. You understand what I'm saying now? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, certain local governments in the those states, okay, they are like five times bigger than can, can you, local governments. Kanu you know. has forty-four local government. Lagos have twenty. Lagos have twenty. You get the point I'm saying. So at the end of the day, do you know how much resources is going to Kanu to each local government? Oh yes. I now that the, the local government are almost going to be economically dependent right now of the state of the yes. state government. Yes. You know, so you see how much all of this is are you know mm. how much is happening. Yeah. Look at uh, 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 what's it called. Uh, uh, the other point, the other point he made just now, I, I mean, we've cleared that Obasanjo was the person who was changing the Senate presidency on the issue of uh, under Buhari. Buhari wanted to remove Saraki. It's just Saraki himself was a smart, a smart, uh, you know, a Senate president who had to guide himself thoroughly, and that was why Buhari could not. Buhari was never comfortable with Saraki. Yeah. Now the one we have right now, Lawa, there is no president that will not be comfortable with Lawa. This is a puppet Senate president. Yeah. This man has no opposition whatsoever. He has never had one. As a matter of fact, he begged his own candidacy to become the Senate president currently was done in the parlor, in the living room of uh, Buhari. Whatever Buhari says goes. This is a country where there had been breach of you know, constitutional provisions by the Buhari's presidency like with reckless abandon. No appropriation of this executive uh, uh, government goes through the, to, to the House of Assembly. This is a country where the president will just give, dash one million dollars to Afghanistan. It will yeah. not be known by the by, by the National Assembly. This is a country where the nation came together and said, "Man, we have you know uh, what's it called? They looked at our own electoral laws. We have passed an electoral law to to, to include direct primaries." We should probably cut down on some of this nonsense we are seeing right now. The president refused to sign and asked and asked the National Assembly to remove the direct primaries and make it indirect primaries and consensus so that the corruption can continue. And they brought it back. They agreed and signed against the will of the Nigerian people. A puppet Senate president. My brother, we have a long way to go. Let us take a call, my brother. Yes, please. We take the call. And, uh, okay, go ahead. I think we, yeah. we've lost the Okay, we love that caller. So thank you okay. so much. Please, our numbers are on the screen. Some of some of our uh, viewers are asking uh, on both uh, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, and, and, and the number is equally pinned to the Facebook page. Yeah, as well. it's, 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 it's pinned. pinned. Yeah, maybe we'll just yeah, pin it. Again. So, so please, you can dial in and uh, make your contribution as we look at 23 years of Nigeria's democracy, the road so far. Comrade, we were trying to establish something with political parties, and people already started mentioning it. I have been asking a question, considering what happened to former uh, Governor Kika Obi. Yes, if we can take the call. Hello. 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 Uh um, sorry, I don't want to take uh, the piece. I don't know how long, how many times we are allowed to call in. It's still bad. I just um so if I'm taking the piece, please let me know so I cut the call. I don't uh, want to um Mr. Ben, just time. just take a minute to establish your, your case very quickly. Normally we don't yeah, take okay, calls. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, um the gentleman, um the gentleman which you did say we had four Senate presidency. No, we had five from the East. And I'm glad you made it mention of we had a forgot um Adolfus Wabara from um Abia State. Yeah, thank you. Know, you. So yeah. 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 That very true. Very very true. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, talked about um I'm I'm just trying to correct a point. I mean I'm I'm an Easterner myself, you know. You talked about um 
um, Shabaki being a smart Senate president, and um, Buhari wanted him out, and um, because he was smart, exactly because he was smart, because he knew what to do. Why didn't those Senate presidents that Abbas and Joe wanted out? Why did they come together and say, you know what, this man is playing Kalo Kalo with us? <laughs> this man is playing Kalo Kalo with us. Why didn't they stay and say no? We won't allow this man to to disorganize our region. It's, it's, you, you made mention of Saraki. He wasn't liked, you know, but he was able to stand his ground. Why didn't those guys? Okadibu was a very strong Senate president. We remember Okadibu. We still refer to him. All right, all right, Mr. Mr. all right, Mister Ben. Your you point, know? your point is well made. We've had a minute. Thank, Thank you very much. It's well made. The word, the word has heard you. Thank you so very much. And, and and one thing I just want to say is that when you when you look at the legislature. Like yeah. the Nigerian Senate now is 109 members. Yes. House of Rep is 365 members. Yes. My brother, if you are a Senate president, out of 109, if a little majority want you out, you, you are you are gone. So there are a lot of intrigues in some of these things. It's not as easy as just a few people from the East to say, oh, we want Adolphus Wabara to stay. We want Eva Ewerin to stay. So little, little things. And you know we are human beings. Sometimes we make mistakes in life. Like Evan, eh, where, eh, it was his name they just used to take him out. Evans and Evan. So documentation and all that. And then that was that was the end of his uh, Senate presidency. But bring it, coming back to where we are, uh, comrade, we are looking at political parties. I was saying that political parties are the vehicles for ascension to a uh, position in a democracy. Yes. Nigeria. It is always PDP, APC. Yeah. In the last election in 2019, my brother, we had about um, uh, 73 political parties, which for me was too much. But now we have 18. Because I neck have the register so many, and I support that yeah. because some of them they couldn't meet some criteria, so they removed yeah. them. So again, now everything you hear in Nigeria is about PDP, APC, PDP, APC. Does it mean that we, we cannot have a third political party or a fourth one so that Nigerians can have more uh, alternative? What is your take? Okay, uh, you know... They're probably looking at the Peter Obi scenario. Oh, yes, yes. First and foremost, bro, I, I... One of the, the windows I've given to our Nigerian political space is... Yes, it's 23 years, but we are still evolving. And so, so many mistakes definitely will be made. Mm. Uh, even, even here in the UK, um, we have two major political parties and we have other small, small parties like Green, like... Uh, Libra, uh, Libra, Democrat. Libra Democrats and mm. all of that. Uh, in Spain, we have equally them like that as well. Um, you would expect, normally. It is because our, our, our democracy has not really, really evolved. Ordinarily, it is not bad to have multiple political parties. Mm. You expect some political parties, for instance, to be very strong at regional levels, at a state level, or even local government levels. They don't even have any business with the national level. In Spain, for instance, we have certain communities in Spain, so certain, certain local governments governed by certain political parties that you have never heard of. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yeah. And they meet the needs of that particular locality and all of that. You know, so I, I expect that at some point, some of these political parties will become strong in some local governments, in Edo states, in Enugu states, in, uh, you know, but it will just be their area of this thing. You understand? So it's, it, is, it is not uncommon to have two major political parties, you know, having all the muzzle to have this national spread and all of that. It's not uncommon. It is for us to develop the other structures in a way that the other political parties will be appealing because we do not have political ideologies yet in Nigeria mm -hmm. and it is the ideology political ideologies that drive you know followership in other places now the, the ideology of certain political parties may be to satisfy the interest of a local government or a state government for instance we have Abga right now for is it Anambra State? Yeah, Anambra. You understand yeah. what I'm saying now? Yeah. Now, you expect that in some other local governments in Anambra State, Abga will be in charge. You understand what I'm saying now? Because this is the ideology of that particular locality. So it is not really wrong. Really. We, we take this, this 
Yes. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, we can hear you. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I just called back. It's just Christian, please. No, Christian, sorry, we are not going to take this call. Apologies. I have a lot of other calls coming in. Yeah. If you if you call in once, we don't take it a second time. I'm just trying to say something about Wakadi, but then I'll end the call. Nothing again, please. Ten seconds, sir. Yeah, what I said, what I want to say about Wakadi, we know how Wakadi passed away. Wakadi was very vocal. He was. Hello? I think we lost that call. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yeah. I was embodied the way he passed away. Okay. So, 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 so that's just what I want to We know how he passed away. So, everyone, every other, every other celebration that came after him had to learn lesson from, from what happened to him. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, uh, our brother Christian, uh, for just chipping in. Please, uh, uh, hello, hello. Uh, we have another caller. Hello, is that a uh, comrade show? It's comrade show. What's your name, sir? Where are you calling from? My name is Ruben. I'm calling from uh, South Africa. Go ahead, Mr. Ruben. Um, please, um, thank you for what you are doing to promote unity and uh, good governance in Nigeria. Thank you, and God will reward you endlessly. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Now, so, somebody called and was talking about uh, Southeast and their political whatever, okay? Yeah. We have anything we are doing, we have to be fair in everything we are doing. Yes. Because in any, in any, country, in any society where there is no justice and fairness, we have not started. Absolutely. Mm. The, the the European Union and the Americans and other developed nations are working because there is fairness, equity, and justice. Okay? Even, even in a country like Switzerland, in a country like Switzerland, organize what national government. Hello? We can hear you, sir. Go ahead. Our other calls are coming in. Just quickly round off your point, sir. Italians, they have Dutch, they have water price. And know that when when you give this person power, it is good for you to give to other person. Yes. Very good point there. We'll take the next call. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, Elvis from Mega. Go ahead, Mr. Elvis. Yes, uh, my own contribution uh, and my own opinion is that uh, for me, Nigeria should stop this regional politics they are playing in Nigeria. Because for me, when you are serious about your ambition to become maybe president, it's not when uh, it's close to the, the presidential primary or this. Like, you must work um, if people feel that they want to become president of Nigeria, this is what they have to work down. It's not something of one year, two years, three years. For me, this this is my own opinion. It's not that because you can't just people look at uh, somebody like Omo Agege today. Omo Agege won uh, the APC uh, 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 in uh, in Delta State. He worked for it. He, he was in the full front. He even, he even took the maze in, in, in National Assembly before they making uh, the, 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 the deputy senate uh, president. This is how the people have to work for it. Not maybe you sit at home, when you come to 2023, you feel uh, uh, this is time for you to become president, uh, we will just come inside the house and call you to become president. It doesn't work like that. For me, they have to make their home, set their affairs, make their home and you know the home with force and two other issues I see. Nigeria does not have opposition. Nigeria has only one party. PDP, APC are one party. Just in tomorrow, if PDP win, you will see everybody in APC start the country to and moving back to PDP. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nigeria needs a good opposition. This is what I, this is what I was in Wiki. Wiki, I know that Wiki was in trash or this, but I see him as a good opposition because when you are when you are a good opposition you are not afraid of anything you will be vibrant you can say anything you can oppose it because without good opposition nigeria cannot move anywhere 
Thank you, thank you very much, Evis. Yeah. The point is well made. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. That's the much we can take. Yeah. Thank you, Evis. So, Evis has also touched on a political party, and if I say something, you no, know, I mentioned ideology. Yes, he yes, said ideology. Every says something now that the uh, APC, PDP, you cannot really differentiate between them. And this is what yes. a lot of Nigerians are thinking. Um, now, two major political parties. Another call is coming. Another call. We check the call. Please, uh, we, we will appreciate if you guys can be calling directly. WhatsApp calls are really giving us issues because other calls are interrupting WhatsApp calls. Hello, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Conrad, Conrad Latte. This is uh, Mr. Odion Aloba calling from New York. Odio Aloba, I greet you, sir. Go ahead, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just want to make a quick comment, you know. I know that, you know, I know what is going on in Nigeria is really very bad, you know. The kind of, uh, I, I'm always a kind of like, I always refuse to call it democracy. It's actually democracy. It's government by the mob for the mob by the mob. So what is going on when it comes to issue of the Igbos, uh, the way the Igbos, they've been handling this thing since, you know, since, uh, what do you call uh, is it 1999 or something like since the handover power to the civilian? Is that when you look at it, you see that the way the Igbos they be playing their politics is so chameleonic. These people are out there for themselves. We always say in Nigeria, the most the most people that trade in every nook and crannies of Nigeria, they are the Igbos. Up north, anywhere you can think of. So now, if these people cannot use that their trading mechanism to diffuse the politics of what goes on in the in the northern region, then there is a problem. And secondly, what I want to say, during the time of uh, Jonathan, everybody always hate Jonathan. That Jonathan is the best, one of the best president we ever have in Nigeria. Believe me or not, the people that ruined Jonathan political power in Nigeria, they were the Igbos. Now let me state it. When, during the time of Jonathan, who was in charge of aviation, it was an evil person, Stella Odwa. The deputy speaker of the house was Edior, who was in charge of the constitutional amendment that could have amended the constitution, amended the constitution and create more state, I, I mean, and create more constituency or local government area. Then Hopu Dozima was the chairman for aviation in the house. Then you talk about Desiani Madweke, it's an evil person who was the minister for petroleum. They go to the finance, the, the finance minister was Ungozi Uweala. Now, Bat, Un, uh, Bat Unadi was in charge of power, who actually was trying to search up power under Jonathan. Jonathan has to relinquish that guy, because after that guy started restructuring power, the power sector, he tried to put it over and privatize it for himself. Now, Ekweri, what do you call the other guy, Ekweri Madu, was the Senate Speaker President of the House that could have been able to amend the other constitution. Then you have the Iyoha Ugede. Then you have a chairman for has um, for has and this thing was an evil person. So at the end of the day, when you see the litanies of these people, my brother, even during the, when you're talking about region, regional government in Nigeria, who derailed the regional government of Nigeria? Was he not, uh, was he not uh, uh, Dr. Onadi Azikiwe? So these people, they just have to really sit back in their in their region and restructure themselves and love themselves because there is, that love is not there among them. It's only when their political power is bankrupt up north or in Asorok, then they will now come back and start, and, and start yelling about Biafra, Biafra, Biafra. But when they are dining with their house, and their suya mentality, they don't they don't talk anything about Biafra. But when they are bankrupt in that sort of, when they come back to their people, then they start singing a different song. Uh, 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 Mister, uh, uh, Mister, 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 Mister Oloba, thank you very much. That's the most we can take. Please, uh, when we are calling in, let's try and uh, use very civil. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's our language be a bit more civil. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's not be insulting. Yeah. Uh, because uh, what we are doing is trying to empower ourselves as much as possible. Uh, and that's what we are doing here. Uh, you know, people have different different opinions and all of that. Let's respect each other's opinion and, of course, uh, pass the message that one will pass it, um, that one will pass, you know, respectfully uh, so that nobody will feel insulted. Yes, over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Lante. So I was talking about political parties. Uh, we have two major political parties in Nigeria. And then something happened this week. One of the uh, frontliners for the PDP primaries, uh, Dr. Peter Gregory Obi, he, he, he left the PDP and then he moved to another political party. So social media, the Nigerian political space, everywhere was buzzing. So. And now, 
24 hours later or 48 within 48 hours Mr. Obi has pitched his tent with the Labour Party. Yes. In your view, comrade, could this be because considering the large followership, a lot of Nigerians are really happy hearing Mr. Obi, his, uh, his cerebral outlook, he looks very intellectually sound, he looks composed, um, and his track record. Could this be the beginning of the third force, in your view? Um, well, uh, it could be. It could be because Nigerians must wake up to that reality. Mm. Right now, the trajectory of our Nigerian, you know, uh, of, the, of the political system has to change. And this change cannot come in the old order. It has to come in a new order. And I, I believe very strongly, I'm, I'm advocating seriously for Peter Obi, not just because he's, because he's an Igbo person, but because I see in him, you know, uh, those features that Nigeria desire and require right now. And so Peter Obi right now for me is gradually becoming a movement. Mm. And the effort we make towards making this movement more elaborate before the end of the year is going to matter. And that is why I am very keen on the matter. You understand what I'm saying now? Um, Nigeria cannot change with what we have with PDP and APC. Mm. Nigeria cannot change with the provisions of the current constitution that we have. This constitution is a constitution that is deliberately designed to keep Nigeria under. Deliberately designed to sink the ship of the Nigerian state. And now, we now require a leader who thinks outside of the provision of this constitution, okay, to help galvanize a movement to, you know, uh, review our constitution in a way that this constitution will, will meet the balanced needs of the Nigerian people. In a way that the constitution will become a document that will speak more to the justice and equity you know, equitable distribution of wealth and everything as far as Nigeria is concerned. We need to take this call, sir. Yeah, we'll take the call. Go on. Yeah, we'll take the call. Hello. 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 Yes. What's your name yeah, and where are you calling from? from? What, where are you calling from? What's your name, sir? I'm, I'm educated one from uh, South Africa. Yeah. In South Africa. Yeah, Mr. Educate, go ahead, sir. You have uh, 90 seconds. Okay, thank you. Um, please, I uh, want to say something. The problem we have in Nigeria is not something that all of us would not depend on the issue of disturbing the uh, issue of uh, evil or this thing. It's the turn of the Southerners. And any other thing that we, we can do to bring unity between ourselves to, to build uh, Nigeria, we must do it. The Northerners don't have the, they don't have the criteria. For us to, for them to be manipulating us for, for, for how many years? How can Nigeria be a, co a country that is living for centuries? People who is not educated are running the country, which is the military capital. And no one is saying something about it. So we must also say something about those things. If we, if we are here to blame each one another, we are not going anywhere. All right. Hmm. So we must, uh, uh, I don't know, we must capitalize Speaking in one language and one voice to bring anyone from the south that can meet and give us a success in this uh, election that is coming up. If it only can be in the Labour Party to give us the light that we need, we must do it. So we mustn't be putting blame on anybody. Nigeria is a a state, so we don't have option. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my brother. God bless you, sir. Very, very well point. said, Comrade. Let me yeah. before you continue. Very well yeah. said, uh, Mazi Ejuk uh, Wane from uh, South Africa. God bless you, my brother. Yes, uh, he, he has made a very, very valid point. Fire on. Valuable. So, 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 like I was saying, so now we, we must now find a way to bypass what the constitution provides and look at a man who is robust, a man who knows the reality of the Nigerian state today, and a man who can converse for. The, if the president of Nigeria today wanted the constitution to be reviewed, okay, to reflect justice in this country, it would have been done. And I think that in somewhere like Peter Obe, Nigerians can push for a review of this constitution. This constitution is too, is very one-sided. I have already started making some observations, okay, 
on no account, when the constitution is going to come, go on that holistic review, on no account should we have any religious clause in the constitution. It's one of the problems. In this constitution of the Nigerian state, where the Nigerian people don't even, are not even recognized, Sharia is mentioned multiple times. You understand what I'm saying now? Even at that, all that religious, religious bodies, none of them is mentioned in, this, in the constitution. So for us to have equity and balance, we must have a constitution that reflect Nigeria as Nigeria is and leave issues of controversy. You understand what I'm saying? Apportioning power to people to things like Sharia, to, for them, they will have Sharia courts and all of that and all those things. All of this needs to be wiped out of this constitution and make this constitution reflect the true state of Nigeria of the Nigerian situation. That is one. Now, in Peter B, I see in him a character that can bring about patriotic spirit within the Nigerian states. Patriotism. Where Nigerians will truly love to be Nigerians, irrespective of where they come from. A country where if you have lived 20, 30, 10, every 10 years, 15 years in a particular region, you should have a right to contest election in that region. You should have the same right that anybody in that region you know, has or state as it were. We must have that sense of balance and we need a leader that first of all need to stabilize the ship of states and make everybody feel included in the arrangement. And a leader who is strong enough to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with any human being or group of human beings, okay, who are not standing with the rules of engagement. People who could pass through the corners to ensure that they continue to steal from patrimony, patrimony of, the, of, 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 of the state. We need a leader who is conscious, who is compliant with the time. A leader who can command that respect can start toe to toe with the national community and say, but this is what Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria wants, and that will be so. Peter will be possesses all of that. He ticks all of the all of those boxes for, for me. And so our own advocacy is for the entirety of the Nigerian state. If Peter will be moves to anywhere, okay, let that anywhere becomes the major political party in Nigeria. Peter will be stuck in labor. Our duty right now is to make labor a major political party in Nigeria. I have said, and it is a possibility, that we can give Peter Obi 20 million votes. You just said earlier that the, when we were talking earlier, or you said it publicly, you know, that the, the election that brought in Buhari the second term, he only had 50, 50 million votes. Yeah. And I think he had 11. Yeah, Buhari had 15 million, 191,847 votes. And, and Atiku had how many votes? 11 million. Who had 11 million, 262,978 votes. So, so, so what I'm saying is that our, move, my, our movement, right now, let me just say my movement, but I have my own advocacy, is that Nigerians must not come into this ring, okay, with a view, okay, to having the target to give it out, be 20 million votes to become president for 2023 so that we can begin to steady the ship of state. There's a call, sir. We take the call. Okay, sir. Hello. 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 Hello, sir. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Lagos, Nigeria. Go ahead, sir. I want to appreciate you. The, for the name. The name. What's your name? What's your name, sir? My name is Chimeze. I'm from Anamba State, based in Lagos State. Go ahead, sir. I support yes, I support you for the your full support for P2B. The first thing I see you, I think that you are among of uh, supporters, um campaign teams. But yesterday and uh, I think day before yesterday in Facebook, you see, ah, you are not a campaign manager of P2B, but you see his ideology and his system, it is served to support him for better Nigeria. So I appreciate you for that. Please, I want the Southern and so Oh, we, we lost that call. Uh, it is it is it is WhatsApp call, and that's what the problem it always is. Is that Wait, network? You want to call uh, us? Uh, call direct. Just call direct. Yes. Try, try to uh, call direct. WhatsApp call. If other calls are coming in, you'll be cut off. We lost that call up, from yes. Chimezie in Lagos, Nigeria. Now, yeah. please call and call direct. Call. call Go ahead, sir. Yes. Okay, so, I, was, I was on my feet. Really, yeah, you, were, you, were, you were your feet, and you were you were. You said, I think you rounded up. You said Peter will be ticked all your bosses. Let me, let me tell you this. 
uh, in the last uh, few weeks, some of us have really come up blazing. But we've looked at all the candidates, whether in APC, PDP, all of them. Yeah. And just listen to them and where Nigeria is now. Peter will be is the man for the job. He's the best. Yes, no, and like you said, it's not because he's even from the southeast. Yes. It's, it's not, but divinely, he's from there. Absolutely. A region, a region that we feel that have not been fairly treated in, yes. by the Nigerian state. So, but the man is sound. Look, I, I, I just keep telling you, Nigeria is the only country. One of our sisters here wrote an article and he said, a country that eats its best. This was how we missed Obafemi Awolowo. Oh, he was yes. losing election to somebody he was better than. With all due respect to Alaji Shehu Shagari. You can't compare the two of them. And then Gani, Gani Fawe Emi contested election in this country for many, many years. He never got a look if, in. If you, if you see, look at that uh, Shehu Shagari matter we're talking about. Right? It is still same, this ideology in the north. Yes. You are still saying that. That, 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 they, that they, 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 yeah. And, and like you said, it's the number. They not always feel that they have the numbers. That they, 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 are, they are programmed is so true. At, so. at the PDP primaries yesterday, I was looking at some data. I work with figures. I was looking at some data yesterday. 15 states could actually determine the result of that primaries. 15 out of 36 states and the FCT, making 37. So if somebody just got about 15 states, the person was done. And most yes. of these states, they are skilled to the north. So there's a yes. lot of structural imbalance. And a lot of our people are... There's a question that our brother, uh, uh, Arobo Sun Okokone, was trying to yep. put across. I will, Just, I, uh, I will take his another, the call, another call, I think. Another call. Okay, yeah. the same guy. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'll call Anthony to interrupt the call. So yeah, I'll call back. Quickly, go on. Mr. Chimeze, quickly go on. Just uh, uh, 90 yeah. seconds. Which party I think will be is the presidential aspirant now? It's Labour Party. It, but it's not a okay, presidential no, aspirant no, yet. Please, it's not, it's not aspirant yet to and get success there. Mm, and yeah. they lay the South on their own, gather themselves together and give him support. Because the power is not supposed to go back to North. I don't know why they always not play their politics very well. And always we win us and we are complaining. In this time around, we come out with their senses. If the South East and South South can give people be that 11 state has been given him before. Kwakwazu and the article which he has state for not. Mm. And the uh, middle belt will still give people to be vote to be there as a president. So we play, let all John hard together. It's not that um, we're not going to leave it to people to be alone. We, South Island, and we, the um, followers of good things in Nigeria, we support people to be massively for him to be a match or president of Nigeria. I know if he's there. Good thing will come from Nigeria or thanks. What's yes. your call? The question I want to ask, and is the question uh Okokoni uh, are rebel Sony. Uh in fact, I just took let me just get the question. Comrade, I want you to talk about what this our brother have said. Yes, Arobo no sen Okokoni he said, How can Peter be uh, be made popular in northern Nigeria? Being acclaimed most populated area with a very high number of votes. Can the Satana vote alone make Obi the president? If that okay. is, yeah, that, that's Hello. the question. You, know, you see, and you this see, is what Jimmy J is also talking about now. Oh yes, oh yes. You know, um, you know, this this is very technical. To be honest, hmm. um, I, I, I earlier today, I I I, I had uh, I would respond to that. Let's take this caller. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. Good evening. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Ray Nathaniel. I'm calling from Vienna, Austria. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you, uh, Comrade Nantin, and your team for the job you have been doing. Thank um, you, sir. I, I was fortunate to have overheard what one of the callers said that uh, during the time of the Jonathan regime, a lot of uh, officials, office holders were from the East. It doesn't matter if they are from the East. The main car calls that was taking decision, they were from the North. 
So the situation whereby you begin to castigate certain group of people because of certain things, it doesn't work. Uh, it's a good idea. I believe so much in Peter Obi. He has a, the foresight to take Nigeria to a greater height. And I want to call on all Nigerians, wherever they may be, all over the world, they should please join hands to support him. Yeah. We need a better life for Nigerians. We want to move Nigeria to a, 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 a stage that it will be envy of other nations in the world. Absolutely. I just feel OB is going to do something good. Look at our governor in Edo State, Obaseki, yes. what he has been able to do so far. What people hate most about politicians that don't share money is that they don't say anything good about them. Why should you take out money that at the end of the day you will not begin to take the money from the treasury of the government to feel where you have taken money to campaign or where you have bribed? See what happened to delegates. They were given thousands of dollars. Do you think those politicians that did that they are going to invest just on nothing? They want to get something back. Our people used to say, a man that sets a trap with an antelope expects something bigger than an yes. antelope in return. Very true. So we should be very watchful of whatever we are doing. Thank you very I much. Thank sir. you so much, and I pray God continue to strengthen you all. Amen. God thank bless so Nigeria. God bless Peter Ogi and everyone that is going to support him. Amen. Have a nice day. Thank you. God bless you too, sir. Don't don't go into that question, sir. Let me play this to our people, Nigerians. Please watch. Somebody wrote on Facebook. It's becoming really popular now. He said he wants to know the university where they study the course delegates. Yeah. He would like to study delegates and become the de a delegate. Mm -hmm. And the reason why the person was saying it, one of the reasons is this. Just watch. Oh, oh, hey, delegate. Delegate, 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 That is the dividence of being a delegate. He bought a tear rubber. Tear, what and what? Not because it's a delegate. Delegate. See levels. Yes. Dr. Agbos, it's not funny. No, but this is what our politics has become. Yeah, this, this is, and and there were other, there were other, there were other, uh, mm -hmm. there were other visuals we were getting, you know, yeah. yesterday, True. before yesterday. You know, Dr. Agbos, somebody shared. I mean, it was in your group that somebody shared this. Yes. Uh, and I like to uh, do I have it uploaded? I yeah, think the, I the, do. The I def def definition of democracy. That's what the definition of somebody asks is a cartoon. The, you know, uh, credit to trust, uh, daily trust. Hmm. Uh, somebody asked, "How would you define Nigerian democracy today?" And the response was that money of the people stolen from the people to buy the people. Absolutely. Money of the people stolen from the people to buy the people. Absolutely, and that is the that is the charade we are seeing right now. Instead of government of the people, by the people and for the people, and for the people, that's it's that's not the money of the people stolen from the people to buy the people over. Yes, let's take another caller, sir. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, what's your name and where are you calling from? Please, can you reduce your device? Go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, my contribution to this uh, to this thing is that I want the I want to advise the Igbos to understand that uh, uh, is uh, the former president of Nigeria, which is Madi Azikiwe, Azikiwe was was a, was a cost to the Igbo and not a blessing to the Igbo, because the problem the Igbos have today was caused by Madi Azikiwe. Because I want to did advice him, but he never listened to our war war. So the Igbo doesn't have a party. The Yoruba doesn't have a party. Both parties, PDP and APC, belong to the North. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, because if you listen, if you if you have listened, look at it before, 
Thank you very much, sir. The point, the point is well made, sir. It was a cause to the evil, not a blessing. Thank you very much. It's well, it's well made. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, comrade, you know, driving... Yes, we, we were on that point yeah. of the... Oh, oh, we really, we really, yeah. A lot of people are just, uh, you know, really uh, diverting to other yeah. things now. But what to focus on this third force, Peter will be, you know... Do you want to take this call? Yes, let's take this call. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hello, good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Osayande Oroha. Go ahead, sir. You have uh, 90 seconds. I'm calling from I'm calling from Canada. From Canada. Go ahead, sir. Yes. So what what happened yesterday is uh was a calculated attempt for, for the Northern Atoridico the Satan has right. Yes. I believe that it was a money back show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The stepping down of Tambua was, you know, was pre pre attempt, premeditated. At, premeditated, yes. Article knew that was going to happen. So, just, so Tambua, Tambua was a joker. Yes, he was a joker. He was there to distract the aspirants. It was a, a planned. It was already planned for. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Very much. Briefly, yeah, and that's one. So thank let's you. go down to the questions. Yeah, thank you, Sayande Wokan from Canada mm -hmm. for that very brief, straightforward. Yeah. So the mm -hmm. question I'm asking is this: Peter Obi saw something, and when he left mm -hmm. the PDP, he said what he's seen is against his personal principles, and he left. Yeah. And said he wants to pursue his uh, he wants to pursue go through another route. People were condemning him and all that. Now, yesterday. Early yesterday at the at the PDP primaries, Muhammad uh, Hayatu Tudin, the, the the former uh, chairman of FSB International Bank, a businessman, renowned businessman, he also said the same thing and vindicated what Peter Obi said some few days ago. Yeah. So this and you just showed a video now, delegate yeah. buying Tierra Baka, yeah. um, because dollars and all that from what we hear. It's been alleged that a lot of money have been exchanging hand. Up so, to up to forty thousand dollars by yes, delegate. So how how and somebody that has spent dollars upon thousands of dollars money to get tickets. If by the time he gets into office, and this thing, let me just say, uh, comrade, it's not it's not only at federal level. There are mm -hmm. reports that this thing is happening at uh, senatorial primaries, governorship oh, yes. primaries, oh, yes. uh, federal house of representative, house of assembly. So, and then this brings to this third force and PTOB as a movement. So, I want you to okay. take it from there. Okay. You know, while, while we are doing what we are doing, mm. um, Nigerians, I want to appeal, first and foremost, I, I know Dr. Agnes is going to equally you know, make that appeal. Uh, we, don't, we do not have a very long, open window for people to get their PVCs. You know, everything we are saying right now is going to depend on how many PVCs we are able to you know, have and keep them very close to our chest. Mm. Now, on this issue, sir, I can tell you almost for sure now that the Southeast and the South South is almost going to go to Mr. Obey 100% wherever he goes. Yes. Almost. Now, I concern the Southwest and the, the core North. Probably some part of Middle Bet we call it go for, for, uh, for, for, for Peter Obey. Yes. Now, and I think that before, you know, uh, the third quarter of this year, the end of the third quarter of this year, 
Peter, the, 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 the message of Peter Abbey, the movement of Peter Abbey would have immersed the entire Western region. Yes. Now, my calculation is this, and I, I want to see that happen possibly, now that Obi is, Obi is in labor. One, for Obi to get the ticket of labor, and the possibility of Obi getting somebody that has a proper northern spread as his own vice. If, for instance, we can have a Peter Obi Kwakwasho ticket under labor, okay, then the issue of you know uh, spreading the movement to the core north will be solved. not be a problem mm. because with Kwakwasho, a man who has a very you know white northern spread, okay, the possibility of will be you know uh, getting some substantive out of the north will be very high. Mm. But while all of these permutations are still very much in process, I do think that every Nigerian right now, particularly those of the Southern Divide, must make it a point of duty to continue to, sp to spread the good news of this, of this movement, to continue to, you know, uh, you know, work with this movement. You understand what I'm saying? Or be right now should become bigger than PDP and APC put together. That is the vision. And we must, I have a target that I'm preaching. And that target is that Nigerians who want Nigeria to change and who believe that we have a Peter Obi whose everything speak to the change we require in this country, okay, must set a target to say we have to meet 20 million votes for Mr. Obi in the coming elections. Anywhere. Any, you know, these votes are not going to come from the bushes. They are going to come from human beings. Hmm. And so I am passionately appealing for, do, for Nigerians everywhere. If you have not gotten your PVC, please go and get it. The window right now is, is really, really... Yeah, it's 30th of uh, June. 30th of June. That is when it's going to close. Yeah. So there is no time. Spread the message. Get your PVC. Very importantly. And for those people who are making comments, I will respond to you to say we should come from the diaspora and vote. But I mean, you don't worry. We will be on ground. Many of us have said we are going to be on ground. We will be voting. Apart from conversing, we will be voting. And as a matter of fact, uh, Dr. Agmons, I think there's a deliberate arrangement right now yeah. uh, by some people to begin to have zonal coordinators on behalf of the Peter B movement. We are not working directly for Peter B, but we are getting to a point where we want to start having zonal coordinators, okay, for this movement. Because to many of us, we need to salvage this country. If we leave Nigeria to fly the way it is flying, mm -hmm. it will crash. There may be no Nigeria in 2025. I have said this previously. True. They say what an old man sees sitting, a young man may not see it, even if a young man climbs a mountain. This country right now is, is at the very edge of the precipice. This country right now is sinking. This country is hemorrhaging. The arrangement we have with the PDP and the APC, there is no hope in that arrangement. It will be a continuity of what we have right now. Imagine we already hear that under APC, they have, they have shipped, postponed their own uh, delegate election right now, primary for presidential. And we are hearing that the president has said he's anointed good luck Jonathan to take over from him. And that the APC stalwarts should make good luck Jonathan their consensus candidate. That is being resisted. That is why APC primary is being shifted. I don't know how true, but this is the word on the streets. Now the question is, you know, the belief people says when lie resembles truth, it is possible to believe. Just some days ago, the Supreme Court cleared Jonathan and gave him the clean bill of health and the free passage to contest the 2023 presidential elections. Why is all that happening? It's not making us making it look really look like the rumor, the word on the streets may be right to say that APC may just pave way for Jonathan freely to be the one. And the only reason why the Northerners will want to do that is because they understand that if Jonathan becomes president, he has only four years 
to be in the office. After that, he cannot seek re-election. And power will come back again to the North for another eight years. That is their calculation. And so the calculation of the North is never in the interest of Nigerians. It's always in the interest of the North. And so, for, and it pains me that I am talking about Nigeria like, like this under this regionalized arrangement. It's really painful. It's hot. Instead of us to be talking of Nigeria as one indivisible entity working together, you know, for the benefit of the entire nation, we are not happy to, because this is, these are these are the dynamics of the Nigerian state. So the focus is, sir, uh, for Peter B to have that spread in the north. We need to uh, Peter B to be the head, I mean, the, the front ticket of the Labour Party for the next presidential election, and then somebody with a proper notal acceptance should be taken as, as, his, as his running mate. That way, these are messages we easily flow to the north and it will stick to them. It is getting there, but they are listening from one ear and it's going through another ear. Some of them are probably laughing, but I can tell you that if we are consistent, if we are persistent, if we are focused, we will get this nation to support Peter Abe. We will get that 20 million votes and Peter Abe will become president in 2023. Absolutely. Relax. I hear a sigh of relief, knowing fully well that Nigeria is in safe hands. Over yes. to you, sir. Thank you very much, comrade. I just want to just add uh, all this will not be possible if we don't have our PVC. So please, uh, for the online registration to get PVC, uh, that's doing it online, um, it will end tomorrow, 30th May 2022. You complete your application online and then you schedule your appointment for biometric capture before 30th June. But if you want to do it physically at the designated uh, uh, local government office or INEC office, um, you can still do it up to 30th of June uh, 2022. So it's very, very important that we all know this. Because without the voter's card, without the permanent voter's card, the PVC, you cannot exercise your, your franchise. So please let us uh, know that. And this uh, cvro.inecnigeria.org. I've put it on the chat. Maybe we'll probably try and put it again before we end today's program. So you just go there and click. Time is really running out. After one month, INEC have said they will clean all their system and update the register for the elections because some of these things have legal implications they need to prepare the voters register and all that. And I must say this, for the 2019 elections, the total number of registered voters in Nigeria, as collated by INEC, was 84,344,107. And on voting day, the voters that were accredited in 2019 was 29,364,209. Okay? So you can see that only 35.66% of registered voters actually voted in 2019. So when people are talking of uh, sometimes party structure, that structure, I said, look, forget about structure. It is we, the people, that are the structure. If Nigerians really want change, if Nigeria really want a better Nigeria, a new Nigeria is possible, we need to take Nigeria back. Because the way the country is going, like my brother Lamte said just now, our flight is not going well. And we don't want our nation to crash. It is the only country we have. It is the only country we can call our own. So let us all work assiduously. The current president, he won the last election with just 15 million votes. So who says Obi cannot get 20 million votes and win? Who said? And like Lamte has uh, uh, as, as analyzed, Peter Obi can get a credible and uh, northern vice president. This vote that people are saying, well, how will he get vote in the north? He will get it. So it's all about consultation, consultation, consultation. Exactly. Nigerians, our mumu don't do. He don't do. We, we, we can't continue to... Con and I've told some of my friends, I said, look, if we don't take this chance that Peter Obi is presenting, I said, more than no complain, no. From 2023, now we complain tire from 2023 to 2027, then from 2027 to 2031, from 2031 to 2035. So 
let us take the destiny of our nation in our hands. Let's go for the right candidate. We, we should go for it. It's, it's clear. Absolutely. Because some of them will just come out uh, prosperity for the country, employment for the youth, a better economy. They will not tell you how to, they want to do it. We are tired of this. And then they start playing music. And then they will just dance. Everybody will just go. Enough of that nonsense. So let us, this time around, forget about this. Uh, it's uh, from here. It's from there. From Mr. Obi ticks all the buses. Just listen to him. And he has the track record. So this is not the time to sit on the fence. Uh, dear Nigerians, we need to take the bull by the horn because this current system we are running is not taking us anywhere. We have all seen since 29th of May, 1999. Today is 29th of May, 2022, 23 years. A child that was born on this day in 1999 if that child is smart, probably some could have even finished uh, university by now. Or so don't even marry, get you to say. Oh, some, some even be having, uh, even married. So, We're having this one from uh, Taiwan. Taiwan. So, so, Taiwan. I don't know. Let's... We take this final call and then we, we, we round up. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yes, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Sonny, calling from China. From China. Go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, so thank you very much for your pro for your wonderful program. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. And um, I do, I want to pass so that other people can call in and then put their own contribution. Uh, actually, for me, um, my contribution is to find solution. That's all we talk about, you know, like solution to achieve this our aim. To make sure that it will be get the votes. And for those that mainly abroad, you know, I, I hope that we can talk to our people back home to make sure they get their TVC because we all are abroad, many people are abroad. And I know we support our families and friends. So let's also minister to them, try to talk to them to get their TVC and try to vote people in. I hope that with this, I, I really believe that we can also get more people. So thank you very much, and God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you, too. Um, you want to do you want to take another caller? Yeah, we can take, yeah, let's take let's take another one. Hello. Hello. Is that is that Comrade Show? Yeah, this is Comrade Show. What's your name and where are you calling from? Dixon is my name, and I'm calling from Luton. This is from Luton. Go ahead, sir. Yes. Yes, thank you very much. I, I have been listening to, to this program, and it's been fantastic. Uh, if you remember, last week I called in, and I mentioned that uh, this was uh, that Articles plan. I mentioned about Articles plan to, to make sure that it will be thrown out and all the stuff. And it came to pass, just as, as prejudice. Um, well, we'll move, we'll move forward from that, and I'm happy that he has found a place in Labour in Labour Party, and I just pray that he's given that opportunity to fly to be the flag bearer. Uh, um, and with that, I think the the whole thing is now visible. It's now known to every one of us that this is what the Northerners are doing. Again, I want to take us back to a question that your moderator asked you previously. He said he asked a question regarding um, the, the party force, the third party force. You see, the political party in Nigeria is still an association, it's still not a political party because there is no foundation to it. Yeah. When we go back to how uh, uh, the kind of system of government that uh, the British bequeathed Nigerian as a state, you see that it was faulty, although we departed from parliamentary into presidential which of course is still a, 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 a turbulent in our in our flight having said that the association that is that that is we call political party they don't have um um what you regarded as uh, you you said it all in your analysis they don't have ideology and so that makes it association 
if it's a political party, there will be an ideology. There will be something they are fighting for. There will be something that they want to achieve for the nation that makes them different from other political parties, just as we have it in the United Kingdom. But of Yeah, we, we lost that color. Very, very good analysis there. So, uh, like come I with. said last okay. week, it won't eat, but I pray it makes it this time around. With with all the effort I can see that you're putting in and other colleagues and friends that are putting in, I pray he gets it. But my, my, my projection, just the way I'm sitting here looking at Nigerian politics, I would say Peter Obi, when he's going in, it's going to be a triumphant entry. When the thing, what would some of those things are mentioning that are needed to be put in place in national assembly, when those things are in place, you see that Nigeria as a country, the best of it all will come on board. Just as we have this uh, uh, chairman of uh, uh, African Development uh, uh, Bank, is a good, is a good product to, to to rule Nigeria to be a president in Nigeria. Or just the former uh, uh, okay. Sa, Sa, uh, can you um, can you try to round off your points now, please? Can you round off your point in like ten seconds, please? All right. So in a nutshell, what I'm saying in a nutshell is that the uh, political system in Nigeria has got no footing, and it's still it's still just wobbling, and it's not organized, and that's the reason we're still not able to to fly the best. And the young people, most especially, that are supposed to governize and that are supposed to know that this their season has come to take. All right, boss. I think this is this is the most we can take now. Yeah, uh, thank, thank you, you very much for your call. Yeah, thank you so much, our brother Dixon from Luton uh, here in England. Uh, yes, comrade, uh, yes, oh, I just have one other thing more to talk about, and then we round up. Yes. Um, in all this. We will be looking at 23 years of democracy, and we have a great chance. Just wanted to summarize: we have a great chance now to put things in, a, you know, in a better shape. And we've got somebody like Peter Obi. Yeah. Brother, this man is a movement. I, I know what uh, some of us we can feel it. And I, I don't know if it was you that said it in one of your programs during the week. Peter Obi is more like. A kind of MK or Abiola situation. Yes. It's sweeping across the land. So, yes. my brother, summarize. Yes, fellow Nigerians, uh, greetings to you. I want to thank everybody who's been part of this. Um, no, I want you to summarize on the Peter Obi because I have something yes. else I will say. Yeah. On, on Peter Obi, yes. I, yeah. I, I just want to say right now, we've never had it so good in this country that we are having an election window where we have a candidate that many Nigerians can vouch for. A candidate who ticks, you know, uh, who, who tick most of the boxes that we have available. Mm. I think it's a good opportunity that we cannot allow, you know, uh, to just uh, pass us by. Um, we know that our country is reeling from too many things, very sad situations all across. Insecurity is very high. No attention is being paid to our educational infrastructure. Our health infrastructure is in shambles. Nobody's talking about it. Mm. Uh, the average Nigerian is really, really suffering. The issues in this country, they are mammoth. And yet, we do not have a leadership that care. As we speak right now, in all of this that we are going through, we don't have a president who will come out to address these issues, to instill hope in the system, as it were. It's a sad story. It's a sad situation. But I can tell you, that if all Nigerians can come together, irrespective of our, of our, our, of our leaning, irrespective of our, our creed, our tribe, of whatever it is, and so just see the idea that we need to preserve and protect the country Nigeria. We need to restore some glory back to this country and steady the ship of state. I tell you, the man who can do that job is Peter Obi. And it is not just to sit down in our rooms, our homes, in our comfort zones and talk about it. It's to make the move. I don't work for Peter Obi. I don't know him. I am not looking to know him. The same way with members of my team. But we just see him, a character that, you know, we need at the helm of affairs in this country. A character that can attract those necessary investments. A character who, in his own vision, understands that the most important infrastructure that we need to be first before any other thing is the human base in Nigeria. Whether they are Igbos, 
whether they are Yorubas, whether they are, they, 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 are, they are houses, it doesn't matter. The human beings in Nigeria, as a matter of fact, it's not, it's not yet president. He's already making huge contributions to schools across the nation, from east to north to west to south south, all over, because he understands that one of the major components of our own development must be education, and this we cannot take for granted. Peter Obi is a project that will make Nigeria the most beautiful country in the world in another 10, 15, 20 years. We must not miss this chance, but missing it will mean a huge danger for this country. Let us go ahead now, get our PVCs if we don't have. If we do, let us keep it to our chest. Let us understand that we all have roles to play in making a new Nigeria reborn. And this new Nigeria must be reborn, and must be reborn by our collective efforts. Let us support Peter B. For us to celebrate Nigeria 25th years of democracy in a grand style. Thank God you bless very you. much. Thank you very much, comrade. Peter B is a project that can take Nigeria to the next level. And let us celebrate our 23 years of democracy in a grand style by registering and picking up our PVC and making sure that he gets the numbers. Uh, the current president, 2019, won the election, like I said, with 15 million. 191,847 votes. Who says that we cannot give Peter Obi 20 million and get him straight in? Peter Obi all the way. Wherever he goes, we goes. That's where we go. Because Nigeria needs a new direction. Thank you to all our callers who have called in today. Uh, ben from London. A Christian from Wales uh, in the UK as well. Ruben from South Africa. Our brother Elvis from England and the United Kingdom. Uh, Odion Alaba from New York and uh, United States. Uh, AGK, one name, called from South Africa as well. Our brother Chimezie, Fundi from Lagos in Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Inakimio, called in from Vienna in Austria. Cliff Osahini, phoned in from London. Osayande Awoha, he called in from Canada in North America. Uh, our brother Sonny called all the way from the East in China, all the way. And our brother Dixon phoned it from Luton in England. There were a lot of other calls we could not take, but you know, uh, time is always of the essence in this, our program. So, but before we go, comrade, uh, just this morning, we woke up to the news that um, a former vice chancellor of the University of Benin, yeah. Professor uh, Emeritus Osayuki Godwin Oshodi has gone back to his maker. Uh, on behalf of the Comrade Show, I want to wish um, you know, his family uh, comfort that come from above at this time. The prof had passed on uh, at the age of 70, would have been 71 on the 9th of August this year. May his kind soul rest in peace. What have you got, what have you got to say, uh, Lamptey? Comrade Lamptey. Uh, I'm honestly short of words. Um, Professor Osho is a good man. Um, you know, when, when, when good people like this just pass, pass away, it is just a reminder uh, that we live in this transient world um, and um, everybody is just here you know to fulfill aspects of you know uh, their destinies and all of that and when time the time comes it is just a passage and again which underscores the point why you know some of us are surprised that the time people have in this life and the opportunities they have, they don't use it well, some of them. Mm -hmm. Looking at Nigerian politics, you know, people steal the patrimony of the people, they destroy souls, destroy life, destroy things. At the end of the day, nobody is living forever. Why don't Nigerian politicians just live, you know, and do things right? Mm -hmm. um, Professor Oshodi is one of those 
persons who truly exemplify, you know, leadership, exemplify, you know, um, goodness in a human being. You know, um, what can I say? I did a contact with Professor Oshodin, and then uh, when you encounter Professor Oshodin, you never, you never remain the same as a human being. Even your work, at every opportunity, he, he makes you understand what life ought to be uh, as, as a person. And it makes you begin to look at the values that you should hold dear. It's a huge loss. I, I can only say that may God grant a family, you know, the fortitude to bear this irreparable loss. Uh, of course, the last time we quality, you know, talked about Professor Walele Williams, these are very beautiful human beings, you know, that have passed through the University of Benin. And made huge contributions. Um, Professor Oshodi will be missed forever, my brother, to be honest. I, he's a beautiful man, my brother. He's yeah. a good man. He is. Uh, I know both of us, we attended the great uh, University of Benin. Um, we, we, we already left the uh, University of Benin by the time he became the VC. But um, because it's, it's our school, we, we, we are always part of the alumni body and all that. So we knew the the, the, the great strides he made. Wow. Um, there's a press release I want to read here from the president uh, of the University of Benin Alumni Association, UK branch, uh, talking of our sister, Dr. Uh, Mrs. Loretta Oduware of Morocco. Uh, in the, in the press release, she, she is sending her commis commiseration and her condolence to the immediate family of Professor Sayuki Oshodi. Um, the University of Benin alumni worldwide body, the staff and students of the University of Benin, led by the current Vice Chancellor, Professor Lillian Imwetinya Salami. And Dr. Oboroko is wishing all of them the fortitude to, to bear this loss. In concluding these um, tributes, I just I saw this um, very, very brilliant tribute, because we are talking of a very good man here, yeah. uh, from the Great Bini Kingdom uh, Facebook page today. Um, on Professor Oshodin. I, I just want to read it. He said, Professor Osayuki Oshodin, former VC Uniben, has gone to be with the Lord. What an impactful life you lived, sir. Your approach to administration was iconoclastic, a mammoth ovation from the past that was strewn with woes and bastardized academic arena. Indeed, your performance credentials are shrouded in an unsurpassed excellence. You came as the only panacea to the Egyau syndrome among the Benins at that time. Ipso facto, you will remain an indelible imprint on the annals of time. Rest in peace, the academic doyen of our time. You will be greatly missed. Rest well in the bosom of our Lord. Like I said, credit to the Great Bene Kingdom Facebook page. Yeah. I, took, I took that. Uh, so uh, we, we just wish the family the strength yeah. at this time. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, our viewers, um, for being with us all through at this program today. I'm sure you you had a very good time with us. Very engaging, a lot of people telling me. Come this, uh, this call this call has been calling in. I don't know. Maybe we just want to take it as a last a closing call. Okay, please do. Yeah. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Hello. Over to you, sir. I think, um, I think we lost the call, uh, comrade. Uh, uh, we, we didn't lose the call, but the, the caller is not speaking out. Okay, yeah, we, we, it's not it's not audible enough. Yeah. So Go ahead. I just want to thank all of you today uh, who have uh, listened to us. Uh, please, please share the broadcast. Uh, share the broadcast. We'll continue pushing this narrative 
will continue, um, you know, the push to give a new direction to our country. Every little helps that we say. So, comrade, over to you uh, to close the show. Thank you very much, uh, comrade uh, Dr. Tony Agbons. Thank you so very much. Your encourage you have been very wonderful spot on. Yeah, Nigerians, uh, do State people, Anabra people, uh, Kanu State people, Lagos State people, Nigerians in Meduguri, in Bauchi State, uh, Nigerians all across in Kanu, uh, to Sokoto, to Castina, to Zamfara, Nigerians uh, in Rivers, Cross River, in a Boeing State, in Delta State, uh, in a Kitty State or your state, and of course, Nigerians all across the world, greetings to you all. And I want to thank those that will be part of this program. Please help share this broadcast. Uh, information is power. And we've come to understand that. And so that's why we are persistent. You know, Today is actually 29th day of May 2022. Uh, it's making it 23 years we embarked on this uh, our democratic journey, the Fourth Republic. Uh, of course, the road so far we know. Um, the dividends of the road so far we can feel. Seven years ago, a bag of rice was selling for nearly 8,000 naira, between 7,000 and 8,000 naira. Today, the same bag of rice is now approaching 40,000 naira. Uh, seven years ago, the dollar was exchanging for far less than we have it now, more than 100% increase. The dollar is now exchanging for around 600 naira. You know, um, seven years ago, life was a lot easier you know, uh, than we have it now. So it's all part of this 23 years of democratic run, and it's all been very difficult for Nigerians. Seven years ago, life expectancy was a lot more than we have it now. Seven years ago, insecurity in the country, you know, was not this bad. Seven years ago, kidnapping was not an industry in Nigeria. Today, kidnapping, ritual killings, you know, uh, insecurity of all sorts is a major issue in Nigeria. And right now, another opportunity beckons. 2023 is a time for us to rewrite the history of this country. And in writing the history of this country, we must write it in the human beings available to lead the country. And we've looked at the people that have signified interest to become president across various platforms. Only one person, one person, we can all convincingly with reasoning, say, yes, this person is prepared for this job. This person would be different from all the ones we've had. And this person is Peter Gregory Obi. And so, it becomes a matter of personal commitment, not just to some of us, it should be to all of us to get this journey done. It is not, now today we are talking about regionalization in Nigeria, like talking about North, you know, talking about South, talking about this, this conversation, it's happening because of the way we have been led. We need a man who will unify this country, who will take away the conversation of the House of Fulani shortchanging the Igbos, or the Igbos being a problem to themselves, or the Yorubas are the ones hiding under the House of Fulani to make Nigeria what it is, and all of such conversations who will turn them into a conversation, a narrative of saying, this is good for Nigeria. Not just good for the Hausas or the Yorubas or the Igbos or for the the, the, ethnic, the minorities in, in, in the state. The conversation should not move to a conversation that is beneficial to the entirety of the Nigerian states. And only one leader is that leader that we can vouch for, that can help us push us to that narrative so that the narrative can be a narrative of change, a narrative of a better Nigeria a more trusted Nigeria, a Nigeria that instills confidence in her people, and a Nigeria that provides room for people to earn a decent living and feel secured. Remember, repeat is necessarily not the absence of violence, but the presence of justice. And to get justice, to get repeat, we need to sue for justice. And to get justice, we believe very strongly right now, it is time for us to give it to the right man, who, by, by the art of divinity, just happens to be an evil man. Peter Gregory will be. Let's support him. And always be part of the Comrade Show. My name is Comrade Lapte Oriaki. I want to say thank you for joining us. Bye for now. We'll see you again. We'll see you. 
Are you a business owner? Do you make your own products? This is your best opportunity ever. Register your brand now with the first and largest marketplace promoting Nigerian made products. Get access to over 17 million shoppers and customers currently in need of your products. Download on Google Play Store now to register or visit at kiaja.com. Focus on creating your passion. Leave the marketing to us. Follow us and be the first to know. This is the commercial show.